Have you ever thought about what's involved when the President of the United States goes downtown, locally, or anywhere in the world? What you're about to hear will blow your mind. You will shake your head and think, I can't believe it, but it's true. These are the insane logistics of transporting the US President. Let's take a detailed look at the motorcade, which is the focus of any presidential trip. At the heart of the most complex motorcade known to man is the car which the President travels in. Known as the Beast, it's less than a limo and more of the most comfortable tank you've ever known. Also known as Cadillac 1, it's designed to withstand any and all attacks. It weighs in at a staggering 20,000 pounds about the weight of the largest male elephant in Africa. Before they are authorized to participate in the motorcade, all Secret Service agents must successfully complete a five-day proactive driving course. Even more sophisticated training is required of those who operate the President's vehicle. The Beast's doors are eight inches thick, its glass can withstand a magnum bullet, and its floor is made of armored floor plates to guard against roadside explosives. It's even hermetically sealed to prevent biological attacks and has its own oxygen supply on board. The tires are run flat, meaning whatever happens, the vehicle keeps moving. There are rocket-powered grenades, night vision optics, a tear gas cannon, pump-action shotguns, and supplies of the president's blood type. But it's not just one car that keeps the president going. There's a whole fleet of vehicles that play their role when the president is in transit. The beast isn't the only beast in the motorcades, in fact. Every motorcade has at least two identical armored limousines with matching license plates. This implies that potential attackers are unsure of which limo contains the actual seated president. Only a small portion of the motorcade known as the secure package consists of these two beasts. Should an attack occur, the cars in the secure package are built to disengage from the procession. Also in the secure package is the US Secret Service countermeasures fully sized SUV. This car jams any remote explosive signal using two antenna that transmit a huge range of frequencies, effectively blocking any bomb activation signal. It also has electronic warfare sensors that detect if an RPG, that's rocket propelled grenade to you and me, or anti tank missile is launched. It's believed that if it did detect a rocket, the car would release smoke canisters across the secure package to throw off grenades and other missiles. After that, there are three separate SUVs with one distinct difference. Two of them have their rear window open and one doesn't. These two SUVs are known as the halfback and the cat car. If the president is in danger, it's the task of the halfback to defend the beast and the job of the other car to take the fight to the attackers. The reason the rear window is open is so the rear-facing passengers can open fire at a moment's notice. The car with the closed rear window is the control car. This car carries the most essential staff, the presidential military aide and the doctor. In front of the secure package, you'll find the route car and pilot car, lead car and a host of motorbikes known as sweepers. The route car and pilot car scout the road ahead and relay information to the lead car and in turn to the secure package behind them. The motorbikes are essentially in charge of clearing the way for the motorcade by getting cars out of the way and and blocking off roads and junctions. This role may seem simple, but should the convoy need to be diverted for whatever reason, the route and pilot cars must be able to react and communicate quickly. One example of this was in 1996, when President Clinton was visiting the Philippines and was scheduled to meet with a local politician in Manila. During the journey, intelligence officers picked up a message containing the words bridge and marriage. This set alarm bells ringing throughout the motorcade, as marriage is the code word for assassination. The motorcade was diverted away from an upcoming bridge thanks to quick thinking of all involved. It was discovered that a bomb had been planted under the bridge. The plot was reportedly organized by Osama bin Laden. Behind the secure package is a fleet of support vehicles including the ID car, which communicates with the other counter-surveillance agencies. The Roadrunner acts as a mobile communication center for the Hazardous Materials Mitigation Unit, which contains equipment and personnel that can respond to chemical, nuclear, and biological attacks, as well as vehicles containing more Secret Service agents, politicians, emergency personnel, and members of the press. In the rear is the WHCA, White House Communications Agency, Roadrunner Communications Van, which provides the primary communications path via satellite, allowing bi-directional voice, 
data and streaming video, an ambulance and additional police vehicles. This may seem like a totally fail-safe way of traveling for the president, but the Secret Service would rather there were no motorcades at all, as being out in the open among crowds is where the president is the most vulnerable. They plan for the motorcade to be used minimally and no longer than an hour. The other methods of transportation which they prefer are the Marine One helicopters, of which there are six similar decoy helicopters, and Air Force One planes, of which there are two. So, how do they get all the vehicles, including the Beast and its replica, as well as all the other vehicles used in the motorcade from point A to point B? Enter the workhorse of the United States Air Force, the C-17 Globemaster aircraft. This aircraft is designed to carry a huge payload of almost 180,000 pounds and enabled to take off and land on makeshift airfields or dirt strips. The United States Secret Service uses the C-17 to transport the 20,000 pound custom-built presidential Cadillac, the Beast, as well as other limos, SUVs, and other heavily armed vehicles. The White House Transportation Agency, or WHTA, looks after all the motor vehicle transportation needs of the president, as directed by the White House Military Office. And wherever the president goes, the presidential motorcade goes with them. Coordinating the presidential motorcade is no easy feat for the WHTA either, as the president's complement usually includes 40 to 50 vehicles. The security service personnel charged with protecting the president undergo many months of training and will serve a minimum of six years in their role. Not to be forgotten are the teams of mechanics who have undergone specialized training and work on all the armored vehicles, seeing to their continual maintenance. Now, on to the biggie, the most recognizable US presidential symbol in the world, Air Force One. The aircraft includes an executive suite, presidential sleeping quarters, as well as separate sleeping quarters for guests, a private office from which the president can address the nation if necessary, an operating table in case of medical emergency, and two galleys equipped to feed up to a hundred people at a time. Air Force One has quarters for those who accompany the president, including senior advisors, secret service officers, traveling press, and other guests. Using the airplane costs a lot of money, millions, and while the numbers vary, even domestic trips are expensive for U.S. taxpayers. A conservative watchdog group tracking presidential travel expenses found that the cost of one president's flight to a campaign rally in Arizona reached $1.5 million. But now that we know so much more about Air Force One, it's not surprising to learn that keeping our leaders safe doesn't come cheap. And there's more. Have you seen videos of the president disembarking from Air Force One and then climbing into his usual tank-like limo, even in another country? There's a reason for that. The Air Force usually sends the president's bulletproof motorcade together with Marine One ahead of Air Force One. This way, presidents have safe transportation both in the air and once they reach their destination. U.S. presidents have historically also had their own ships and rail carriages, in addition to airplanes and vehicles that were fitted with the necessary equipment for the task. All of this comes at a significant cost, though. According to a Washington Post analysis from last year, a single day of presidential travel abroad costs the U.S. about $200 million, which is roughly equal to the cost of its campaign in Afghanistan. Sometimes that daily total exceeds the annual sales of a sizable corporation. Another very carefully planned operation is when the president has to give a speech outside. He's protected by a huge, transparent, bulletproof screen. Soldiers are posted on rooftops surrounding the large open area. Secret Service agents who have spent weeks in the area making preparations scrutinize the dense crowd during the president's speech. U.S. snipers are visible on rooftops and American agents man security gates. You're now also looking for an aircraft that could explode into a crowd. It's all directed by Secret Service security agents and, out of necessity, always a couple of footsteps ahead. If every guest must be scrutinized, which is necessary, the seating plan passed, the food and drink given the seal of approval, the parking area morphed into a military operation area, then it's very serious business. A headache, but not optional. And what logistics are involved when the president must stay at a hotel? Again, it's all about security. They close an entire wing of the hotel, plus the rooms directly above and below. They've got security on the roof, in the lobby, everywhere. Everything is swept by dogs, and about two dozen staffers get cleared by security, though only a handful actually have direct contact. Those cleared staffers have lapel pins to identify themselves to security. If they're staying at the hotel, agents generally come to the hotel about two or three months in advance. These guys would stop a bullet for their man. But does anyone ever even ask them if they've had lunch? 
Yes, they're naturally taken care of. And the doggies always get something too. What inconvenience is there for the hotel? Because they're often isolated in a closed-off wing, not much changes. The biggest nuisance is the traffic, because the streets around the hotel are closed, so managers on the corners have to pick guests up when they arrive and bring them inside. All logistics that are planned months beforehand. That's what a president's trip is, a logistical challenge unimaginable to ordinary folk. Months and months of planning, and planning, and planning, and planning. That's why when it comes to logistics, everything from waking to sleeping, every footstep, every handshake, the water the president drinks, food to be eaten, the gasoline for the vehicles, every possible detour in the plan, every crease in the blueprint has been ironed out and passes inspection. Even the president's interests and preferences must also be considered to ensure his satisfaction during the visit. For instance, in Italy at the G8 summit, a basketball court was built for President Obama near his hotel. No doubt this added immensely to his enjoyment of the visit. Have we missed anything in this video? Let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe for more videos like this one.